I have to say that um, the German word uh, Schadenfreude is absolutely perfect for this because yeah. you see it happen and you still have a few friends there. But at the same time, you also say, I've been telling you this was going to happen for a very long time. And it's not, as everyone says, because executives made too much money. They did make too much money. They were terrible. They were really bad at everything. But um, no one talks about the most important thing, which was content. And the content became insufferable and priggish mm. and scolding. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to come home from a day of work, sit down on the couch, turn on the TV, open up their laptop, and be told that you know the, their privilege is uh, mm -hmm. destroying everyone around them. How did they go like woke with this guy as their founder? By the way, I heard an interesting report on the journal um, that he was offered 3.5... 3.6. 3.6 <laughs> by Disney at one point to sell Correct. Vice. Yes. Now it's completely, it's out of business. Mm -hmm. The latest, it, the, the, the investment firm bought it for was 350 million, but yeah. it's not worth that anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's closing. I mean, it's done. The experiment's over. Yes. And it used to be this kind of hip, cool place for like, especially young guys. I don't know. It yeah. seemed like young guys would, would read yeah, Vice I mean, and that's watch what Vice. I went to work there for that reason. And the fact that that deal uh, didn't go through did make me financially a lot poorer. I could have been a <laughs> yeah. lot richer. Yeah. And I know a lot of people who are in the same situation that they held out. And when you start believing your own bullshit, it's a pretty, um, like a legitimately toxic environment, not in the, the sort of trendy use of that word, but people start believing the media narrative about themselves. Um, What's the name? Is it Shane Smith? Shane Smith, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, but, you know, it's funny that when you look at all these old stories, the $3.6 billion was at the same time that the valuation of the company was five and sometimes even $6 billion. Mm -hmm. It's a privately held company. How do all of these media organizations report that stuff without a caveat? The caveat is we're trusting the people mm. from within this company mm -hmm. who obviously have an incentive to inflate the value of the company. The reason that number was considerably lower from Disney was because they got to take a few peeks inside. And I think that was even a little much, which is why they walked away and didn't fight for something in the middle or something. That mm -hmm. the, the collapse of that essentially spelled the end of the company. So how did they go? How did they go woke and annoying? I sat next to that guy years ago, maybe sixteen, I think it was. Mm -hmm. We went out to the Oscars. This is mm -hmm. back when you know people wanted to be uh, next to me at the Oscars events because they thought I hated Trump. Yeah. And then they found out I didn't, and it went downhill. <laughs> yeah. um, but we went to this event, and I remember we were sitting at this table with yeah. like Rupert Murdoch and Lachlan. Murdoch. Murdoch mm -hmm. and Shane Smith, mm -hmm. and he was like this cowboy, you know, mm -hmm. it was like saying mm -hmm. really loud, mm -hmm. foul things, which I wasn't offended by, but I was like, wow, look at it. It's yeah. very different than the other table mates. Um, and that was, they were interested in him, I think, for the same reason every yeah. media mogul was interested in him because he seemed young and like a, yeah. like a gunslinger. And they were scared of the future because their core audience averages age 70. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So yeah. what yeah. happened? How does that guy wind up, you know, with a woke organization? Was it because he cashed out a couple years ago? Uh, well, I, I remember being in the office, uh, an older iteration of the office, when someone whispered to me, I guess it was 2011 or 12, that Rupert Murdoch was there. And everyone was like, wait, Rupert Murdoch is here? Why? Mm -hmm. And then we find out why. He put money into the, to the, to the organization. Other people in his family did too. I think that there's a number of reasons that it fell apart. There's a number of reasons that the politics became so crazy. But I think the most obvious one is when you give up control because you want to be taken seriously. When you're the cowboy mm. organization, you want the accolades of the real people. You want the awards from the actual institutions. And then you start hiring people from journalism school and they ruin it. They ruin mm -hmm. it. I don't think it was Shane Smith that made a decision to, I, I think people sat back and said, well, these are what the pros do. They know what's, what's, what's right. And it turns out that nobody liked this stuff. The other stuff, I mean, if you, I, I never used comments as a weather fan of anything, no, particularly on like YouTube comments. But if you looked for the past like three, four or five years on the comments on, on Vice stuff, the first 20 were always, what happened to you guys? I mm -hmm. used to love this stuff and now I can't stand it. And you know, I, I'm not, you said Cheryl Atkinson, I'm not unlike that in the sense that yeah, I couldn't do the stories I wanted to do. I stopped even bothering to pitch them at a certain point. That's what she said, too. And tried to make the stories that I did do better and, you know, more balanced and more interesting. And I hope I did a good job at that. Um, but, you know, it's my fault, too. I stayed there. I mean, I was well compensated. And, you know, we had a show on HBO and it was great to do that. But um, it, it involved a certain amount of compromise. And no one came to me saying, you know, you have a slightly different point of view. 
that'll be more fun for the show. That'll mm -hmm. create a little tension. People will get involved. They'll debate it. They'll argue about it in the comments, whatever it might be. There is a point where nobody wanted that. You know, if you went into a, a meeting, an editorial meeting, and you pitched something that was any of the stories that you that I've ever talked about on the show, it would just be silence. And, you know, people, people would not want to do any stories that were off the kind of acceptable path of, you know, what, what can one say, progressivism. That's probably mm -hmm. the easiest way. To say How it. much did the New York Times story or series, I forget what it was, that came out, I think 2019, um, portraying Vice as like this yeah. toxic hotbed yeah. of, of uh, like, you know, quasi-rapist misogyny. Right, misogyny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 2019. Uh, yeah. yeah, I forget exactly when it was, but like that, and that story was long gestating. Everyone was like stealing for it for months. And then they dropped it on a Saturday. They dropped it on a Saturday. Wasn't what very, happens when you drop a story on a Saturday? It, it was wasn't a very convincing yeah. story, but um, but I'm sure it had internal ramifications at, at Vice. Some people left uh, because of it. How much did that moment? But I you, you know, the funny thing about stories like this is a lot of people breathed a sigh of relief and they said, well, you know, it wasn't that bad, this New York Times story about a Me Too scandal or a series of small ones within Vice. And, you know, I made a different argument and said, yeah, but you know what people are going to remember? That there was a story. That's all they remember. Mm -hmm. They don't remember any of the details. Mm -hmm. Nobody remembers That's any true. details. They do remember, I mean, the big ones in like in your situation, like Roger Ailes, that was, you know, they were trying to get, you know, Shane Smith. They were trying to get the top leadership. They didn't get that. Um, and they got a lesser story, but it, that was the beginning of the end for the organization. They cleaned house after that. They brought in a bunch of, you know, boring corporate people. They made sure that the CEO was a woman, of course, and people who had no idea what the brand and what the idea was. And I talked to people who told me one thing about politics, about how they viewed the world, and then would get on a call or do a town hall with the entire staff and say something entirely different. This happened over Chick -fil -A. and over oh, and over Yeah, did you have to pull again. a pink Starbus, a Starburst out of a jar oh, and tell I your mean, sandwich story? My versions of that are a thousand times better. <laughs> <laughs> and they're more numerous, yeah. There's, there's a lot still, of there's still yeah. truthers, chick, chicken truthers. With cyber attacks on the rise, protecting your data security is more important than ever. So why is Congress considering a bill that could put your credit card data at greater risk of being hacked and exposed to foreign networks? Our advertiser, the Electronic Payments Coalition, says the Durbin-Marshall credit card bill shifts billions in consumer spending to less secure payment networks, all so that corporate megastores can make bigger profits. Find out more about the issue at electronicpaymentscoalition.org and decide for yourself if you would like to tell your senators to oppose the Durbin-Marshall credit card bill. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.